I've got a small message that I really hope that um, when I'm done here this morning, that you would walk out with that one single thought and asking the Holy Spirit to be a part of your journey in helping you reveal that word. But before I get started, I just want to read the scripture that Pastor Julius has on his heart for this particular month. If you guys can go to the next slide. And it says this, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you have received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that He appeared to Cephas, then to the Twelve. Let's open up and pray. As Father God, as we just come here this morning and we consider the message that is on topic for today. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that as I speak, just lead and guide. May the words that I speak just drop into the hearts and change lives to such a degree, Father God, that they will not deviate any longer or any further away from the plans that you have for us as a church, for us as an individual, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, I don't know where to start. <laughs> you know, I sometimes have like an ABC program, but now it's like, Ish, I just want to kind of just jump in. So roll with me this morning, and uh, let's see what the Lord just gives us here. But the, th- the word that I want to start off with, besides Pastor Julius's um, scripture, is found in Isaiah. And it says this, For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and, they, and do not return without watering the earth, making it bare and sprout, and providing seed for the sower and bread to the eater, so will my word be which goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me void, useless, without result, without accomplishing what I desire, and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. I do not know how many of you realize this morning that throughout the Word of God, one constant truth remains at work over and over again. And it is this. When God speaks, change takes place and sets the trajectory of all that finds themselves attached to that specific word. If I have to go back as far as Genesis, looking at the, when the world was officially shaped, Everything that is set with it, the stars, the moons, the sun, and whatever comes with that, still finds and runs on the very single commandment that God set it to run. Think about this for a moment, and I know it's something silly to think about, but the world population continues to grow today because God said, go forth and it hasn't stopped. Despite the enemy's best efforts, through war, through sickness, through rejection, he hasn't been able to counteract what God has set in motion. Second slide. The most, import, the most powerful force at work that governs everything around us are the words that God speaks. And how we downplay that, how we don't run on those very things. Throughout history, God showed us over and over again when He speaks, it accomplishes everything. Through one man, God spoke and said, through your seed, I will establish a nation through a mere promise. As we read in Genesis chapter 22, which says, indeed, I will greatly bless you and I will greatly multiply your descendants like the stars of the heavens, like the sands of the seashore. To a fugitive. God appears in the burning bush. And he says to him, I'm going to be sending you to, back to the place that you ran away from to go and set my people free. As we read in Exodus chapter 3, verse 10, Come and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. To another man who was on a mission of his own, God stopped him dead in his tracks, not only changing his heart, and his mind, but also his very purpose, his plan and understanding of the one that he was busy pursuing. Acts chapter 9, verse 3 to 5 says, Now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light of heaven shone around him. And falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you 
are persecuting. See, each and every single one of these individuals found themselves in an event hearing the Word of God speaking to them. But it changed them to such a degree that everything they did, every person they came in contact with, it was impossible for them not to change their lives as well. See, God didn't just change an individual's life. Everyone that gets attached to that person or that person comes in contact with cannot and will not remain the same. As the Word of God promises, His Word will not return to Him void. What God sets out will be accomplished through the person He's speaking. My question to you this morning, and not just to you, but me this morning. Next slide. And it says this. What word has been spoken, or perhaps is needed to be spoken, that could drastically change your life to such a degree that alters the way you live out each and every single day. And it is an important question to consider because it not only affects the very destination we are to reach one day, but it sets us for the very destination, the very purpose that God has called you and myself to, to this very day. Receiving a word from the Lord is the very difference. It's the very difference between those who start this journey with Jesus, feel like giving up and then doing so, versus those who feel like giving up after having started with Jesus, but then decide, I can't, because I've made a decision to follow Jesus this morning. I have decided to follow Him for the rest of my life. I cannot, because God has spoken a word to me, and I'm holding on to those words for the rest of my life. Each individual couldn't go back to what once was, because the word that God had spoken to them personally. So the personal word, next slide. These words, unfortunately, don't come every single day. And I want you to hear my heart this morning. Perhaps a question that should follow the first question is, what has the Lord spoken to you? How many of us can say, I have actually heard from God myself? Not through a person, but just knowing that in a moment God had spoken. If history tells us anything, it's that God doesn't speak to us every single day. He does so at specific junctions, at specific points in our lives where our heart just knows that this is God and it is impossible for me to deviate from this point. You know, while the Word of God does speak to us every single day and it is enough for us to run on, it, the Word of God is enough for us to change in a moment. But there, are, there is a word that we need to receive at times that changes us, that sets us, that propels our lives to such an extreme that we cannot deviate from it. And the, the, now I know Pastor Julius has been playing a lot around with the Hebrew and the Greek, so I don't know, I wasn't planning on it, but as I was writing this, God dropped this in my, my, my heart. And there's two words for the word of God. There is the Logos word, and there's the Rhema word. Now both are God's Word speaking. The Logos, however, is the written Word of God. That is what we've been given every single day of our lives. It is our choice whether we want to pick up that Word and hear what God is saying. It is our choice whether we want to hear and understand, like a diary that has been written over a long period of time, given to us to help us understand who God really is. That is what God has given to us, but it is our choice. The second word, rhema, is a word that God drops only at a specific occasion in our lives. There are two, and they both are important. Don't put the one aside or think the other one's more important than the other. I'm hoping, and as I'm speaking to you this morning, I'm hoping that some of you can begin to think about a word that God has given to you personally. A word in a moment where you just knew that this is God speaking. I cannot deny it. And forgive me, I always, I always tell the same stories, and I tell the same stories because they have greatly impacted my life to such a degree that I cannot and will not deviate from those words. I mean, I can remember at the age of 17 going for my walks and talk at night with something that just started off with me having to burn off a little bit of energy, couldn't sit still, you know me, had to go for a walk. And as I'm walking, this walking became boring without doing something, but I saw an absolute opportunity for me to start spending time talking to God. And I can imagine 17-year-old, 16, 17-year-old me walking around and people going like, there goes that crazy child again. 
something's... <laughs> Can I tell the story quickly? I remember sleeping over at Pastor George's house. <laughs> and I was wandering around the house because I couldn't sleep. Andre Gale comes, Devil, is that you? Yes, I can't sleep. I'm thinking like, it's poor people. Sorry. <laughs> Pastor George, Pastor Gale. I couldn't sleep. But you know what? I walked and I spent my time talking to God. And I encourage each and every single one of you to have the same type of relationship. You should be able to talk to God every single day. But at age 17, I felt the Holy Spirit drop the scripture that I somehow must have either read that day or some point, And it said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, devil, will enter the kingdom of heaven. At 17 years old. And all I kept thinking to myself is, Lord, how do I know I'm not that person? How do I know when I get to heaven, you're going to be like, who are you? It scared me. It worried me. It it really concerned me. But I stood, and and as I started getting revelation, and a revelation didn't happen just in a moment. It happened over a period of time. It started off with God saying to me, only those who know me, those who have a relationship with me, that's what it's about. And it, starts, it started right at the bottom saying, be gone, you evildoers, for I do not know you. And that's like the Holy Spirit saying to me, devil, it's all about your relationship. And as you, if, if, if you know anything about a relationship, a relationship isn't every once in a while, oh, hey, just checking in with you. How are you doing? That's not a relationship. A relationship is ongoing. It's every day. It's consistently Yes, and I, I know there's granted, there's, there's times where you come to the Lord, and, you, and, and I've had this question before, what do you do when you've got nothing to say to the Lord? We all get there. We all go like, I'm, I go for walks at night, and all I do with the Lord is, it's me again, Lord, I'm just touching base, just uh, coming to say hi, it's nothing new, but I just wanted to come spend some time with you. I just wanted to come and chat with you a little bit. And then I end up start talking to him about what happened in that day, just to get, the, to get the conversation started. But at age 17, that is what God dropped in my heart. And it kept me so straight. I cannot and will not be able to leave this Christian journey, because to do so, what would be the point? What would all those hours have been for? At age 21, I can remember... I had a dream. I had a big dream. <laughs> One of mine wasn't bigger than his. No, I don't think so. I stood and I said to God, I can still remember myself sitting in a park, and I, and I still said to the Lord, Lord, if nothing happens in PE for me in the next two years, I'm moving to Joburg. I said these words to God. Two years, Lord. I give you two years. If nothing happens, I'm moving and I remember working in a music shop. I was so excited because it's like just that one step closer to the dream that you have. Now you're going to mix with, with uh, other band members. You're going to connect with people. It's just like it's a door opening to the next door. And I was so excited. I had one band who approached me, and they wanted to, me to play for them. Uh, quite a well-known band. can't think of their name right now. Evolver. That's the one. They approached me in the beginning stages of their band, and they asked, don't, don't want to come and uh, do some auditions for them. And I, and I listened to one of their songs and I thought, this is not a good band. <laughs> this is not a very safe band to play for. Uh, so um, God steered me away. I just I, I purposefully, Pastor George and them weren't even there. I was looking after their house that, night, that time as well. And I purposefully didn't even bother going down. I just stayed away. But I can remember myself standing in, in the music shop. And I, I promise you, you know when God speaks to you, it is like you can you create like a snapshot of that moment. You can recall the surrounding. You can even see the way you were sitting. Everything is so crystal clear. And I stood in that music shop, and as I walked and I stood in, uh, just in, towards the doorway, I felt like the Lord said to me, Devil, this dream that you have is not going to happen. My life crashed in that moment so badly because everything that I have dreamt of, everything that I was hoping to achieve and become one day, it's like God said, that's not what I've got for you. And I remember myself praying so hard, well, Lord, if that's not the dream, then what is? I didn't go and study. I didn't go and do all of those things because my dream was this. I put all my eggs in one basket, and this was it. And you said to me that this isn't it, and he removed it. And I can still remember myself sitting in the back praying, and that's what Pastor George called me up the one time. And I can still remember the words when Pastor George even spoke to me. I see you standing in front of people, but, it's not, but whether it's in song or whether it's in word, I don't know. 
the story of my life. I don't know. <laughs> but God knows. And so God called this person, me, as an individual, in that moment saying, your band, no, ministry, boom. This is where I've called you to. And over the years, over and over, the Lord has revealed to me and showed me that this is why I did not go down that road. There's a reason it's called drug, sex, and rock and roll for a reason. <laughs> it's not a good place to be. But God knew that this is, this is the best place. This is where you're going to be most effective for me. My heart was always to serve God. My heart was always for God. I could never see myself working a normal nine-to-five job every single day. I had a desire to serve the Lord with whatever I could. And I am. At age 23, and everybody knows this one, the Lord said to me, Melissa's the one. And he said that over and over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> Even to the point where the Lord said to me, and I can still see that moment, and Pastor George still read the scripture from Job, which says, who are you to question me? Where were you when I created the heavens and the earth? And da 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 And it's like God said to me, Devil, if you ask me this one more time, <laughs> just one more time. Look, I've spoken now, it's done, it's you know. I'm happy. Go for it. Been married and I've never looked back ever since. And it's sad for me, and, and forgive me, but this is, just, this is just my feel. It's sad how many individuals will not come before God and say, Lord, what do you think? Yeah. Yes or no? Are you happy with the one that I'm getting married to? No, they'll run into this. And then afterwards, when things are falling apart, then they want to run back to God and say, why is it not working, Lord? And God's like, well, did you include me in the process? <laughs> no. Yeah. See, that's what a word does. When God speaks, it makes it impossible for us to deviate from the very thing that He has set out for us. And maybe that's a word for somebody here. Each word changed my action, which in turn propelled the message of the gospel in and through my life and my way of doing life. Everything of mine has one thing in mind, and I'm hoping that people see that consistently over and over, that I just want people to have a, res a relationship with the Lord. Because if you can have a relationship with the Lord, it will change your life to such a degree that it will set you off to the very purposes and the plans that He has for you today. I sit with many couples, and I'm privileged. And I say I'm privileged because it is. And it's couples that I don't know. And I always have to say to people like who don't know me from the first get-go, I could possibly come a little bit across as very passionate, very strong. But I always say to them, just please do me a favor. Just take me with a pinch of salt. Hear my heart. And by the end of the fourth session, you would have understood that this is who I am. But in that first session, that all I could keep, I felt like the Lord just kept refining it and refining it to the, to the point where all I do with people now is when I sit down in that first session and I talk about the foundation of a good marriage, I say to them, how is your relationship with the Lord? How would you best describe that? And some would kind of look and say, oh, I sometimes talk to Him. Uh, you know, I sometimes pray, I sometimes go to church. I look at them and say, your very foundation of your marriage is built on your strength of your relationship with the Lord. The stronger your personal relationship with Him is, the stronger your relationship is with your spouse, and the stronger your marriage will be moving forward. He's the one who kind of sits there when, when, when you're not happy about something. He's the one that kind of says to you, hey, 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 I, I hear you. I hear you. Yes, you have the right to be upset. We all get upset. But then, he, then Jesus always likes to twist things around and he says, but, but tell me, when you're wrong, what do I do? And then he takes you to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and says, oh, your love is patient, Lord. Huh? Is that correct? <laughs> Patience. Be patient. You're kind, Lord. Yes, I'm kind. So do go do likewise. Do not keep records of wrongs. That's what a relationship with Jesus does. That's what happens when the Lord drops a word into your spirit and says, I want you to build on this. I sometimes wonder to myself, I wonder how many of those couples when they walk out of that marriage session with me thinking like, you know, I just came here for marriage prep and this guy's pushing more the, 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 the relationship with Jesus than anything else. What you, who's this guy? Like, and I say, unfortunately, that what I say to people is, I can only give you the tools. I can only show you that this is what works. It's up to you what you do with it. I can't make you live your marriage. You can. Next slide. There's a profound effect that takes place when a personal word gets dropped into the life of a person by the Lord. As the Word of God says, it will accomplish what it sets out to do. Next one. 
The rhema and the logos go hand in hand. I see my D somewhere at the end there. <laughs> Let us be clear. Let us be crystal clear this morning about one thing. The individual word that the Lord drops into your spirit will always line itself up with the written word of God. It's unfortunately so scary how many individuals are running on these words that they are hearing, in inverted commas, from the Lord. But when you think about it and you watch their life, it actually propels them in a completely different life. Their relationship with the Lord starts dwindling. The, the very purpose and the desire that God has called them for doesn't even make sense anymore. But they run on these words and they think, but I heard from the Lord. This is what the Lord has said to me. When this happens, it shows me one thing. It shows me that there is a severe lack of understanding of the written word of God. And it shows me that there is a severe lack of time spent in the word of God. Next slide. One should remember that the written word is the very principles. The Lord himself governs all he does. He is not a different God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Testament. There is no difference. It's sad for me how many people cannot see that there is a loving God in the Old Testament. It is sad. When God showed over and over through the Israel, through his people, when the people said, but you are a loving God, compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in love. This is the God we serve. He is the same. He is a holy God. He is to be reverenced, to be loved, to be respected. I want to say this, and I want to make this clear. He is not going to do something different. Something, an in inverted commas, new that goes against the Logos word. Next slide. When you receive a rhema word, I want you to check, the lo- uh, check it with the Logos word to ensure that it lines itself up accordingly. Why is it important? Because as I've already said, so many individuals have run on a different trajectory for their lives. They've moved off onto ventures that they're not supposed to have been. So many people have isolated themselves off from the word from the world because of the word of God. I'm spending time alone with God. This is what God wants me to do. It's like, yes, there's time for that, but you do not cut yourself off from the world around you. There's a reason why we get together like this. Iron sharpens iron in a moment like this. And we all are reminded of eternity one day when it's not just going to be me alone with the Lord. It's going to be me and the billions of people that have gone before me and have joined me in this journey, and it's going to be to worship God in that moment. It's amazing how many people have run on a different gospel. Why do you think there are so many different versions of the gospel, the prosperity gospel, this gospel, that gospel? Everything is completely different from the one that the Lord has given to us, because people have heard from the Lord. People don't understand the written word of God. I want to say this, and, and this is very scary to, thought, to think about. But I want to remind you and myself of one thing. Remember this, that the enemy knows the Word of God much better than you and myself. And the enemy has spent countless hours confusing simple issues, simple things. The world is running on a tangent that makes no sense, where they have even gone to the point of asking, what is a woman? Where they ask such a basic thing. Because they're looking to confuse us so much. This is what the enemy does. He twists things. The greatest ability that Satan has is to twist the truth of God's word. Taking even the simplest of truths and making us wonder whether it is true. Nothing has changed. He did it right in the beginning of Eden. Is that really what the Lord said? Are you really going to die? And that same tactic has been at work consistently. It is important to receive a rhema word, but it is important for you to know God of that rhema word. What, are, what word are you running on, and does it line itself up with the written word? Your word and the gospel. The word God gives you will always be the word that sends you. 
while a great deal of people desire to receive a personal word, and I know we've all been there, we all feel like we need to just hear something from God. We all need to have some prophet come stand up here and say something that's going to be like, I see you there. And God says this, da, 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 and he rambles off things. And in that moment, you're like, I feel so special. Like God has noticed me. The problem is we, we, when, when Christians do that, they, they fail to, to realize that as God is busy speaking to you, he is busy commissioning you. He is busy sending you. It's not for you to feel good about yourself. It's not to feel only worthy. There's going to be action that is going to be required after receiving a word like that. And people are standing around and that's all they want. They all want to feel good about themselves. And I know we all have this tendency. We all have these moments where we feel low, where we feel down. And the only thing that we feel like is God can just let me know I'm still doing good. I'll feel better. And I'll go out and make a difference. But the Word of God reminds us that this is a walk by faith. I believe and I trust. I just journey alongside of Him and I realize that all I can do is just be the best I can. And leave the rest up to God. Let him change me. Let him tweak me. Let him alter my behavior in certain areas. And the rest will fall into place. You know, while many Christians are spending a great deal of their time wanting to be validated by the Lord, there are many individuals out in the world who are losing their lives to the enemy. Hell is filling up fast and furious while the enemy is busy wreaking havoc in the world around us while Christian soldiers are standing around saying, I'm waiting for my orders. I'm waiting for my word. I'm waiting for something from God. Next slide. The orders have been given. The call has been extended to all those the Lord has spoken to. And the time to act on what the Lord has spoken is now. Not tomorrow. Now. When Abraham heard the call of the Lord, what did he do? He left everything. He left his rich home, the comforts of everything he'd known, his land, and he ventured into the absolute unknown. He didn't know where he was heading, but he had a word from God, and he ventured in through that word. When Moses, had, uh, Moses was doing everything he could do to escape the very place that he had hoped never to return to, he had started a whole new life. He found a wife. He found a family. He was happy. God comes and says... Yeah, you know that place you're trying to avoid? <laughs> I'm sending you back. Wait, what? <laughs> How many of you would be happy to go back to the place you're escaping from? Some of you might be thinking to yourself, Lord, don't ever send me back to that work. And one day the work job op- op- opportunity opens up and it's the same place. Yeah, but it's those people, they know me too well. I don't like, yeah, I'm sending you back there now. <laughs> Changed. And I want you to make a difference in their lives. Paul wasted no time, certainly. Once he heard God speaking to him and he got revelation and he restored his eyesight, he was out there preaching the word of God, teaching every single person, and he has gone into such a degree where he's written most parts of the New Testament. That is the power of the written word and the word of God being spoken. These men changed to such a degree that made it impossible for them to return to what they once knew. Next slide. Today, there are three types, and forgive me, hear my heart, there are three types of individuals that sit in an auditorium like this. Number one, there are those who, have, who attend but have never received a word from God. There are some here who are wondering to themselves, you know, I attend Sunday after Sunday, and I encourage, do not stop, because when you least expect it, God's going to make himself known to you. God is going to speak to you. But there are many Christians who still haven't had received a word. And those are the ones who normally end up giving up. Those are the ones who think to themselves, I can still live in the world. I can still do what the world wants me to do. I can still party. I can still do da, 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 da. But my life isn't really sold out for God. The question is, do you have a word? Did God speak something into your life that made you realize, I've got to stop this. I can't. I can't play on both sides of the fence. I need to choose a side now. The second, uh, the second grouping of people is those who have received the word, but you have nothing to show for it. Remember, when God gives you a word, He's sending you. He's sending us to go out and make a difference. The gospel is never meant to be kept for ourselves. Our rhema words is never meant for us. It's to make a difference. 
That's what God calls us for. God has got a purpose. He's got a plan. He's on a mission, and we need to jump on board. And God will encourage you. God will speak to you. And the third one is those who have received the word and have gone out to live out completely different lives. It's like, uh, Gordon, you're one of those people. <laughs> one of those people who are just like they were called for the Lord, and all of a sudden, one day, something the Lord speaks ignites something inside of their hearts, and they are sold out for the Lord every single day. Everything they do is for God. As time draws closer to the, the return of the Lord, can we still afford to take and receive what the Lord has given to us and still sit around? This is playing church. This is just a club for certain believers. And I know generally when you ask, hey, have you invited this person to the church? I don't really want this person in my church. This is my space. This is my environment. I'm happy here. I've got my friends here. Now I've got to bring that person in the mix. Eesh, I don't know about that. That's going again against the gospel. That's going against the flow of what God is. Your job is just to say, come, come. And if you don't want to mix with them, go make your own friends now. Go make your own friends. <laughs> but they become part of what's happening here at the church. God has called us to be history makers. He's called us the chosen elect for a reason, for a purpose, and that is to display the power of the living gospel to all those we come in contact with. My question, and I'm asking the same questions over and over, and I'm hoping that you'll go home today and think about this. What word are you running your Christian journey on today? What has God spoken to you? Have you received a rhema word? Have you received something that you can vividly call and recall and, it's, and, and actually say, I can see that day in my mind, and I can remember and I see how that has affected my life today? If you have received the Roma call, the last question is, what have you to show for it so far? Has the fruit been developed? Are you bearing fruit? We will never be able to live out the living gospel without first having received the word from the Lord that has changed our lives to such a drastic measure.